from an absent father. His greatest fear is that he's passed that evil that's inside of him onto his son. You are too quick to temper. You are rash, insubordinate, and out of control. This will not stand. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. It is not too late. They befriend Freya, who is an exiled Vanir goddess who used to be married to Odin. They meet Mimir, the self-proclaimed smartest man alive, who serves as their guide and their confidant. And they meet the Holdra brothers, Brock and Sindri, who are world-class weaponsmiths who end up their main source of upgrades and equipment. Now among the enemies they make are the Aesir gods, whose leader is none other than Odin, someone we never meet in God of War 2018, but who casts a very long and dark shadow over the Nine Realms. There are consequences to killing a god! Why? How do you know? How do you know? After many adventures, Kratos and Atreus end up fulfilling Mom's wishes, and over the course of that journey, they find out more about each other and about themselves, and finally find a common ground between them. They become the close family unit that Faye hoped that they would become. Ah! In God of War Ragnarok, we fast forward a few years, and little Atreus is now a teen, and they're back to hiding out in their home in the woods in Midgard. During the course of the previous game's events, they were forced to kill Odin's grandchildren, Magni and Modi, the sons of Thor. Thor does a lot of the lion's share of Odin's dirty work, and as a consequence, he's a very violent, unstable personality. At the end of the last game, they were also forced to kill Baldr, the son of Odin and Freya, and that has its own set of consequences. He was a very powerful chess piece for Odin, one that Odin is incredibly bitter about losing. Freya has vowed vengeance against them for the killing of her son. Kratos and Atreus didn't want to kill him, they were friends with Freya, but Baldr tried to kill her in front of them, and Kratos had no other option in the moment but to kill him to save Freya's life, even though it meant losing Freya's friendship. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell! That is my promise! He saved your life! He robbed me of everything! <laughs> everything! His death is also foretold to bring about Fimble Winter, which is a brutal three-year winter that is then followed by Ragnarok. It's an apocalyptic war between all the Norse gods, the giants, the dwarves, and the elves, and an army of the dead. They're all destined to fight in a battle that basically ends the world. Kratos is understandably worried about his son and what it means for him. You get to go on this journey with how Atreus grows into a young adult and how Kratos grows into his next era in his life and really see kind of the parent that he's striving to be, but the person he's striving to be. I find that tale so incredibly relatable. We had started shooting um, you know, plenty of content before the pandemic hit. In fact, the week before we all went uh, work from home, we were doing a shoot. I remember being on and off that set, running back to the office and having to talk to studio leadership about what was going down and um, how this was gonna impact us moving forward. And those were trying times. For us, it was a very unique challenge because we had to bring in actors and we had to record them. And so we had to look at different ways of adapting our typical motion capture process and dialogue recording process so we can continue production and continue at the quality that we wanted for our players and our fans. We had uh, some actors 